Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Stu's Game Reviews live stream. It's August 13th, 2023, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. You can translate that to whatever time zone you are at. The game we're going to play today is called The 39 Steps, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, wow, there's already five people on the stream, apparently. That's, that's unusual for the first five seconds. I have with me voice actor extraordinaire Dorian Cairn. How's it going, man? Hi, hi. Thanks for having me. So, I'm going to start the game in a minute. Right, now I want to one concurrent for you. So, the, the five was just a lie, just to get me excited for a second. So, <laughs> I'm going to start the game in a minute. Before I do that, I just wanted to maybe give people a chance to get in. And also, um, just mentioned uh, that I was at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo today in Garden City, New York. It was really cool. Um, I got a bunch of cool stuff there. Um, actually, I'll, I'll, show, I'll, show the, I'll show my pickups really quickly, and then we'll get to the game. Um, before I pick up actually, so I saw my buddy John Riggs there, um, very, very good, good guy, um, and David who was there as well with him, and, uh, also, uh, Pat the NES Punk and Ian were both there, and, uh, so my good friend, uh, Leonard Herman, and, uh, his, his whole crew, Mark Bear, uh, was Ralph Bear's son, the guy, Ralph Bear, the guy who made, made the Magnavox Odyssey, etc. So a lot of cool people were there. Oh, also Mark, uh, from Mark W. and Rob Bob present YouTube channel, which is a pretty, you know, relatively small channel, but one which I go to a lot. He's a, he's a very cool guy. So, uh, got to, got to meet him for the first time in person. And, uh, yeah, and Lenny and, uh, Mark Bear did a panel, which was cool, about the brown box and the Magnavox Odyssey and the life of Ralph Bear. And then I, this one I picked up. I got this, uh, Atari 2600 game, Super Football. This is, this is American football, if you can tell. I don't know which teams those are, but I'll pretend they're the Jets, because I like the Jets. They're green. Uh, but usually number 81 is not passing, so there's a little bit of an inaccuracy in this, this game, I think. But anyway, uh, Super Football, this was sealed in the box. It was 15 bucks. I thought that was a pretty decent deal. And then I got... Uh, let me feel my headphone for a second. I got this game. And Dory, if, I'll put it back in, so feel free to like you know, give commentary if you want. But like, I got this game, Earthrise, which I, which I have. But my copy is much more beat up. Um, and it was $5 in the box, completed. It's, if, if anybody hasn't heard of this game, it's basically like a Sierra... Uh, old style Sierra AGI game like old King's Quest or Police Quest or whatever, but by this company Interstell, it's pretty relatively unknown, and it's a really good game. I've played it; and it's really good. And hope I'll, I'll just point streaming on the channel hopefully, but it's it's a great game. So if you haven't played that game, you know check it out. And then I got um, let's see, I got this. Rear the this is the first thing I got actually. <laughs> I didn't think I'd find too many PC games at the show, so. I mean, there's Edu Fun Golf Classic and Compu Bar for the Atari computer. See, my tastes are somewhat eclectic here. Um, and then I got uh, this new NES game, which looks really interesting, called Mystic Origins, which is like a Zelda like game. Um, you can see the screenshots on the back. It looks very much like, like a Zelda game. And actually, the guy that sold that also sold me. He was a good salesman. He also sold me. Uh, this documentary he made, the new 8-bit heroes, which part of it's about the making of the game. Hey, Hopster Key. Hey, always asleep. Hey, Gamers Grotto. How's it going? Um, what's actually really sold me on this was the fact that Piers Anthony is in it. If anybody knows Piers Anthony, he's like my favorite author. And I couldn't believe they actually got him for this this documentary because the guy's pretty old and he lives like in the Everglades somewhere. So I got that. And also, uh, there's he also sold me a comic book, which is like a a pre a pre prequel or preview of the next game in the series he's making. So all pretty cool stuff. Then I got uh, this. Already popped open. A new Game Boy game called Orbit: The Microwave Orphan, which is apparently an adventure game for the Game Boy. Sorry, not Game Boy. What am I saying? Um, is it Game Boy? Yeah, it is Game Boy. What the hell is? That? I don't even know anymore. It's game Boy or some some Game Boy like format. <laughs> I can't remember if it's Game Boy Advance or Original Game Boy. I think it's Original Game Boy. But anyway, it looks like Original Game Boy, right? It looked pretty cool. There was actually you could play it at the show, and um, it looked fun, so I picked this up. And then what else did I get? Oh, I bought this game from John Riggs. 
Believe Me the Cube, which is a Nintendo game you play as a gelatinous cube. I like to support Mr. Riggs. He makes a lot of cool homebrew stuff, and he's my friend, too. And last but not least, I picked up uh, the reprinted copy of Leonard Herman's book, ABC of the VCS. Leonard Herman is, is, is a game historian, and he's done a lot of books, and this is one of them this, he, that he made a long time ago for the Atari 2600, um, but it was out, been out of print for a while, and this recently reprinted it, so I picked up a reprinted copy, and it's a new forward by Brent Weiss. So, anyway, that's all the stuff I picked up. I was happy and a good time at the show. And, uh, yeah, hopefully next time... Apparently, I missed a few people, apparently. LGR was apparently there, and I missed him, and Vinny from Vine Sauce was there, and, uh, Frank Cifaldi was the... Uh, not Frank Frank Cifaldi was there, and I didn't see, I didn't see him, but I missed him. But also, what's his name, my... Uh, I forget the guy's name now that I'm thinking of. There were some other people that I didn't get a chance to talk to anyway. Good show. Highly recommend it. If you ever get a chance to get out to Long Island, New York, <laughs> uh, come to that show next year, in August probably. Anyway, enough of that. Dorian, you waited very patiently while I gave my little soliloquy, so it's probably time to, uh, to get the show on the road here. Uh, actually, start the Twitch, too, even though I can't see it today. So if anybody wants to talk to me on Twitch, that you won't, I won't see your response. You'll probably hate me, but I guess that's oh. life. All right, let me make myself smaller, and I'm going to move this to the other window. And I'm going to attempt to start the game, and hopefully this will work. But if it doesn't, let me know. And then after we get to, once we get through the little the intro thing, Dorian, I'll share it with you, and then we can we can play like that. Gamers Grotto, uh, you know, you're welcome to join too if you're if you're actually around and I play PS5. <laughs> oh. Right, here we go. Is it working? Oh, it's not working because I need to forget to shit. Oh, God damn it. Hold on a second. I forgot to turn it on. Alright, let's try it again. Now there's no audio. <sighs> Uh, hold on a second. Let's try this one more time. Let's try this again. It's funny, a game from 2013 is giving you more trouble than um, uh, stuff from the 70s. That's, that's always what happens. Joy, did you voice acting, Gamers Grotto? You should check your Discord once in a while. <laughs> yeah. You can join the call if you like and uh, bring your voice as well. I'm gonna have to make you louder, I think, at some point. We'll figure that out. Alright, I can also um, try and put the volume on my end. Um, well, this is just the credits, so we'll figure this out, hopefully. Like I said, not much here, but I wanted to at least uh, show it one time. Gamers Gross says, I barely use Discord. I've told you this before, I use Telegram. What's Telegram? That's a new thing. Telegram's like Discord, but it has like way less features. There's like Discord for like cooler people, supposedly. Yeah, it's like yeah. It's Discord, but it's less useful. That's why. Hang on one sec. <laughs> hey, Lewis, how's it going? This is a uh, game of, Well, once, once we finish the credit... Well, maybe now I'll tell you it's a good time. It's a game about... It's a spy thriller, basically. It takes place, like, right before World War One, Based on a book... A famous book called The 39 Steps that was written in 1915. And it's period. I believe it also, hmm? I believe it also received a Hitch, Hitchcock adaptation. Yes, it was also made a movie by Alfred Hitchcock in 1935, but the Hitchcock movie, which I actually watched earlier today, is very different than the book, which I read recently. I, I knew they were different, but I actually wanted to read this, to see the differences and to read the book. But uh, they're quite different. Like for example, in the in the movie, 
this guy if this guy gets handcuffed to a girl and she, who, she doesn't believe him and the whole like, thing happens that none of that stuff is in the book at all there's no girl the girl doesn't even exist <laughs> so and there's also another another woman who like in the movie who like who's like married and takes pity on him and, and none of that stuff happens all right let me see if i can share this with you first of all I could also switch to my main mic. Maybe well, it might help because the problem is I only have one like mixer slider for you and the game. So if I make you louder, the game's also to get louder. But I'm not sure. If it's, I'm not sure if it's your fault. I mean, I nothing you can do. Let me let me let me well, sh share the screen though for you. If I switch to my other mic, I can at least um. You could at least what? I can at least, uh, t t like, uh, it, it, it has a volume control, so I can control the mic volume on my end. Okay, well, do you want to do that before we get started? Yes, maybe we'll try that. I already just increased the volume a little bit for the game. If it's too loud, guys, yeah. let me know if, if, the, if the game is drowning me out. I can always go like, hello, everybody! Sorry, man, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to piss somebody off. <laughs> <laughs> People get annoyed when I get loud all of a sudden. And they're like, oh my god, my ears, you killed my ears. Hey, Andy, how's it going, man? <laughs> ah, damn it, how do I? All right. Um... <laughs> Thanks, I'm going to sleep. It didn't disappoint me. Let me make this thing a little okay. bit smaller. Right. Are you ready, Dory? Uh, yes, no, I'm, 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 just about, I'm sorry about this. I'm just trying to get this, I plugged the, the, the mic in and I'm just trying to get it to read. You're, you're learning how to read? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. If this was a, a well-designed, oh, by the way, I didn't mention this. So while you're getting this ready, I'll tell you a couple things. This game is not well-programmed. I mean, like, it looks really good, actually. It looks pretty slick. And, you, and it has very high ratings on Steam. But... It's, it doesn't allow you to play the game in a window, only in full screen, which is why I have to do a bunch of shenanigans and you see my desktop and whatever right now. Um, and I was bitching before the fact that, like, this operating system is called Windows, it's not called Full Screenos. So, like, freaking make your games work in, in a window. It's called Windows, guys. It's not Mac OS. Windows. Make it work in a window. That's number one. Number two, if this was a well programmed game, there'd be a volume control. Where I can lower the volume of the game. Actually, I have a mixer. What do I do? I have a mixer. <laughs> Let me mix. Hold on a second. Let me try that. Okay. okay. Open volume mixer. Hang on. Alright. So let's make this a little bit lower. And let's make... We'll keep the other stuff higher, and that should do it. Hopefully, that will help. Okay. okay. Managed to switch the mics. Don't know if that's made any difference. You switch the mics as well. Yes. Lovely. I don't know if that's made any difference. I'm gonna speak but, British um, today. That's lovely. Yes, it is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even British. That's the funny thing. Yeah. Well, this guy's British. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, ready to go. So, Yes, uh, actually, could you share your screen on Discord one more time for me? Oh, didn't I do that already? Yeah, you did, but then I accidentally... Oh, come on. I'm sorry, my, my USB connections are being moody today. But, uh, yeah, uh, share it again, and we'll just... Sorry about this, folks. We've got worked with, working with amateurs here. <laughs> yes. No, look, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a technical wizard who can make um, Stone Age technology work on iPads or whatever you do. Uh, are you good now? You see it? This, um, <laughs> if uh, I'm inaudible or if I'm difficult to hear, I will try and change things. Wait, but can you see the screen? Yes, I can. I, I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can perfect. You, all right. Not hear me? Yes. I was much wish I could see myself. And, all right, good. I'm all good now. All right. So let's. I don't want to just continue it. Let me reset here. Delete this user, yes. Alright. So why does it continue? It should say freaking start, not continue. 
or whatever. Yeah, that is just kind of useful. So now, I just rotate your mouse clockwise to advance the text. This is the tutorial. But you can also just left click and it works. I don't understand why it's just rotating your mouse clockwise. I'm supposed to be doing this. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it it, it probably, good always good. just seems to have your hour here. This never happens over at the Gamer's Grotto. Yeah, you know what happens at the Gamer's Grotto? At the Gamer's Grotto, we have other things that happen. It's like, amateur hour here. This never happens over at the Gamer's Grotto. Good, yeah. give them all to me. Stu doesn't deserve cool guys. Anyway, let's not talk about the Gamer's Grotto channel because we all know that the level of professionalism of that channel is far lower than this one. All right. Blah, 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 blah. This is, the, this is still the tutorial here. All right, yes. Let me know if I'm uh, coming through okay, folks. Please. Yeah, this is just the tutorial, um, but you but you can read this okay. letter in a second just to show you, like, this is part of the tutorial, but... Yes. Right, you, you can read this letter. If you, can, All right. if you can read it. Yes, I can. Welcome to England. Dear Mr. Ha excuse me. <laughs> Dear Mr. Hanny, welcome to England. I hope your journey from Rhodesia was not too arduous. Would you like to come into the bank and we can discuss matters regarding your Rhodesian mining shares? If you could please make an appointment with my clerk, Mr. Stroop, on Temple 6733. Yours sincerely, Mr. Edward Ainsley, manager, Bennings Bank. Does anybody know where Rhodesia is? Like, it's old, it doesn't exist anymore, but... Does anybody it's know Zimbabwe. What? Oh, it's Zimbabwe, thank you. I really didn't, I didn't remember, so thank you for saying that. Right, so you can zoom in and stuff if you want. Let's just say done. And now we should go to the actual game. I got a, I got achievement for that. Oh, cool. <laughs> got just like I got to, uh, here we go. So what did it say there? Richard Richard Hannay is living in London and he learns from more interesting life. So there is a little bit of hmm. talking, but like a lot of it is narration. You'll see how it goes. Okay. The very first thing he think he speaks, but because <laughs> graphics are pretty good though. Yeah, it is. The, the art's not. I like the flag waving. Oh, yeah. Thought he was gonna read that. I returned from the city on that May afternoon, pretty well disgusted with life. Can you guys hear Dorian okay? Do I need to, like, bump up the volume? Yeah, no, let me know if you guys can hear me okay, because I, if, I may have to restart the whole computer to get this other mic to work. I'm going to pump you up a little bit higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said you're okay, just a little, Lewis said you're a little muffled. Yeah, bollocks. Um, it's because you're, you're, you're wearing your muffler again? No, I don't. I'm not wearing a muffler. It's never warm enough, cold enough in this country for a muffler. You're not bad. You're okay right now. Hmm. Just, just enunciate. Well, enunciate. No, I do my best. Yes, but keep, let us know, folks. If you're uh, just, uh, just let us know, because I can. I can change things. It would just probably. I'd probably just need to restart the computer. I returned from the city on that May afternoon, pretty well disgusted with life. I had been three months up in the old country and was fed up with it. It's a comfy area here. Oh, it's very nice. my house is like this. Richard yes. Hannay, you have got into the wrong ditch, my friend, and you had better climb out. See, now he says one thing out loud. Does his ghost, it looks like, almost. Alright, so you can learn a lot about him, clicking around here. Ooh. My father had brought me out from... <clears throat> excuse me. My father had brought me out from Scotland to South Africa at the age of six, and I'd never been home since. I grew up in the Cape Colony, which was then under British rule. I spent much of my time by the Zambezi, where I would fish. There are several hundred species in its waters, including the infamous tigerfish and Zambezi shark. The wide open spaces of the felt also interested me greatly, 
and the various methods of survival in such an uncompromising landscape. <laughs> Andy says amazing well, voice acting in this game, man. Thank you, thank you. I do my best. <laughs> I'd earned my pile, not one of the big ones, but good enough for me. I'd put it in three years prospecting for copper in German da Demar Demara land, I'm not sure where that is, and spoke the German tongue pretty fluently. I went on to become a mining engineer in Kimberley, where I would where I was instrumental to the formation of the De Beers Consolidated Mines. Oh, wow. the, diamond mi hmm. the diamond mines were a rough business, with countless good men lost in horrific accidents. He must have a big pile if he was working in diamond mines. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I served the British forces during the Matabele, <clears throat> Matabele conflict and was decorated for my role. I served two years with the Imperial Light Horse, and was an intelligence officer at the De Delgoa Bay in the Second Boer War. I lost many friends during those wars. So this is also like give you just some background of the guy, but mm. get on. My, f my final years in Africa were in the municipality of Bulawayo, where I had fought during the Matabele War. I resided once again with my father, who had taken ill. After he died, I decided to leave the Cape and head back to the old country. A lot of imperialists. Oh, sorry. excuse me. Sorry, I keep talking over you. No, no I'm talking over you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, no. Um, a lot of imperialist ladies asked me to tea to meet some schoolmasters from New Zealand and editors from Vancouver, and all of that was the most dismal business of all. I had no real pal to go about with, which probably explains things. Plenty of people invited me to their houses, but they didn't seem much interested in me. I had counted on stopping in London for the rest of my days, but the but from the first, I was disappointed with it. I was the best bored man in England. Okay. Here I was, 37 years old, sound in wind and limb, with enough money to have a good time, yawning my head off all day. I had a long drink and read the evening papers. They were full of the <clears throat> they were full of the row in the Near East, and there was an article about Carol Caroldes, the Greek Greek premier. Sorry, I probably read that horribly. From from all accounts, he seemed the one big man in the show, and he played a straight game too, which which is more than could be said for most of them. I like the atmosphere of this game, or this type. No, I'm not sure it's a game yet, but I like is. the atmosphere. The art is very nice. Yeah, I like the art is really nice. Someone had loaded the cylinder player. I felt a deep nostal nostalgia for my homeland of Scotland as Anna Annie Laurie filled the room. Sounds like a nice song, so I can move around. Not much. British Empire map of the world. Well, that's cool light effect just now. That's, that is. It's nice. really awesome, actually. It is. That looks very pretty. Yeah. Canada. Yeah, it's going to get all... The beginning of Canada. <laughs> they, they owned Canada at that time? Yeah, no, I believe so. They didn't have a civil war. I mean, a, a rebellion, war of rebellion, or whatever. Is this is this like pouch. Hmm. Presented to Richard Hannay, intelligence office, Matabele War, 18, 1897, soldier of the British Empire. This guy's a pretty accomplished person. Yeah, yeah. He's got pretty much everything. Ooh, I can... I'm happy to read a letter. I'm not going to read all this here, but... Uh, probably would we'll bore everybody. Yeah. It looks like... Tension. Yeah. Maybe, maybe read like the first couple... Maybe the beginning of it, I guess. Tensions in the Near East. Balkan affairs test Europe. The Balkan region continues to test the metal of Europe's great powers. In the latest spat, a number of Serbs were arrested in the border town of Visegrad, 
after what Vienna has described as an espion espionage plot against Habsburg interests in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hez Hez I'm Herzegovina. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Herzegovina, I think it's called. Herzegovina. Yes, yes, it's something like that. Um, yesterday, the Tsar declared his unyielding support for Serbia. He has accused Vienna of encouraging abuses against the Serb populations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hez Herzegovina. Herzegovina. I'm going to keep mangling that. I'm sorry. It's fine. Vienna has. <laughs> Let's just skip to the next article. That's uh, the important thing, anyway. Ka Ka Karel, Karel Dees, keep strong. A keen ally of Britain, Greek President Konstantin Karoldis lies at the heart of the power politics of the region. Fettered in London and fettered in London and hated in Berlin and Vienna, the Foreign Office has long regarded him as the only strong head in a notoriously unpredictable region. Within Greece, Karoldis is at odds with King Nicolides, Nicolides, Nicolides about Greek policy toward the Ottomans' remaining possessions in Thrace and in areas of Western Anatolia with Greek populations. Through the Greek constitution, though the Greek constitution gives the king no executive powers, Nicolides has repeatedly expressed the need for renewed military action against the Turks. <clears throat> Karoldis is hostile to military occupations and remains outwardly, outwardly committed to the resolution of the Greek-Ottoman tensions. The, port, the Porte has re recently reiterated its co commitment to defend its remaining a a Aegean holdings at all costs. Karoldi's family's fa famously strong nerves may yet be tested again. Luis is nice answer for buying cars, eh? Hmm. It's a Ford. It's a Ford. It's a Ford. It's a Ford. It's a better car. It costs less to buy, less to maintain. It's the one car I need. I'll buy it. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. This is page two also. I didn't even know this was before. Oh. Uh, oh, that is, uh, I'm not going to read all this, but... It's, it's nice that they have this like uh, these ads and stuff too. Like it's, you, you really can get into the period if you want to. Yeah, like a whole lot of contextualization. Yeah, H Harris Tweed. It was, it's interesting. The, the, the ad for the car continues here. Uh, LOL awards of German menace. This is probably worth oh. this guy. Probably worth interesting. Probably worth reading at least. The first okay. paragraph here. Yes. Lord Aloha, first sea lord of the British Navy, has again warned of the growing menace of German naval powers in the Baltic and North Sea regions. Aloha expressed his... Re expressed his... Ah, I <laughs> <a> word there. <laughs> Ex uh, Aloha expressed his regarding the ongoing widening of the, Ki of the Kiel Canal and the completion of the new naval base in Helig Heligoland in the North Sea. Next month, German dreadnoughts will be able to sail between the Baltic and North Seas in hours, the Lord warned. Combined with the new Heli Heligoland base, I have advised Her Majesty's government that our eastern cities would become a target in the event of any future conflict between the Germans and ourselves. There's probably enough for now. There's also air for baking powder. That's funny. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, let's move uh, on. The concerns of the Victorian housewife. Is there else supposed to look at? Oh. Oh, holy crap. Now that is a lot of ads. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, you actually could like, read all this shit if you want to. Wow, I wonder if this is I'm a not, real... I mean, I'm not, not going to do that, but like, this is really uh, pretty uh, pretty like, cool. Yeah, this is. I wonder if these are real ads. They look they pretty... They must be. They probably are real ads. They actually pulled from some old paper. Oh. Personal ads, births... Marriages. Uh, I remember when those were in the paper. Yeah. Hospitals. And there's also a second page here. Well, oh, this is page. Yeah, this is a different paper, page 19 or something. Uh, we're not going to read all this. I don't have the patience for it, but it's very cool. <laughs> It is. Uh, giving you a lot of context. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get to the actual story now. Hmm. Ah. Oh, sorry. Ah. About six o'clock I went home.
it's like the cheap version of the Indiana Jones trailer. Yeah. Uh, that is what they had to use before Google Maps. <laughs> the graphics are excellent. No, it's lovely. I love the art. Look kind how of, like dreary it looks. It's the perfect depiction of London. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. My flat was the first floor in a new block behind Langham Place. Let's, let's enter. Okay. Oh, okay. There was no restaurant or anything of that sort. And each flat was quite shut off from the others. Alright, so this is as far as I got that I played before. So you can go up the stairs or examine the mailboxes. Let's see the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. And this is me, R. Hene. R. Hene. Ooh. I'm trying to read this. Okay. if you can, even. Maybe, click, can on try. Maybe click on show text in the corner there. Oh. Oh, okay. that's, that's a cheap. You, you can't read the script? <laughs> well, well, I think you can. It's just simple like this. Um, Dear Richard, how is London? I do hope Paddock is looking after you well and that your luck on the horses is lasting out. Ten, out, ten to one it is. Now, here's a tale for you. Last month in the Kalahari, I found myself in a tight spot. After two days on the plane, I lost my way and could not find the river. I was forced to go without water for three days, and five without a morsel of food save for a few mapane worms, an excellent source of protein, which steered me away from starvation. Gross. Yes, that is gross. Then I ran into an old chief to whom I owed money. Because of my debt, he refused to help me, so I had to continue on my feet. The desert is not kind to any man, but I made it out, and a man in Tanga Tanganyika sold me a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Which will be my partner in my future hunts. I have named the animal Shaka after the old Zulu chief, and will take him to the Congo with me, where I, <clears throat> where I go for the elephants. I plan to leave next week if I can get my rifle finished in time. Yours, Peter Pinar. Okay. One of my te one of my teachers used to have a pair of Rhodesian Ridgebacks who would just wander around the school grounds. They're big, big. What are they? Dogs. They're like big dogs. Yes. I've never heard of that. Yeah, they're really only a thing in South Africa. Well, it's, this, this is like a very, this guy is very worldly. He's been like all over the world. He's from Canada or Ooh. something. Like he grew up in Scotland and he went to South Africa. Then he went to Zimbabwe. It's like he's all over the place. I don't know. Now uh, the British, the British the did this? own a lot of the world. Oh, what? what the you have to draw this? symbols to go in your own house? Um, <laughs> What's the point of that? <laughs> uh, that is weird. That was yeah. stupid. <laughs> oh, okay, so whatever. <laughs> so turning the handle is a. That's me home. Oh. I'll be heading out for dinner. Paddock is a sort of thing. They collected paddock oh, now. I hate servants on the premises, so I had a fellow to look after me. Came by in the day. He arrived before 8 o'clock every morning and used to depart at 7, for I never dined at home. Take a bath. I guess it's going to dinner now. Yep. That evening I dined at the Café Royale, and then headed elsewhere for entertainment. Lister Square. Alhambra. Oh, I believe that's a theatre. Makes sense. Evening's entertainment. What is this, I get two choices? Huh. I don't know. Mm. Hmm? Anybody care what we pick here? Maybe to pick both. Yes, want... Maybe. I mean, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll end up picking both. Which one do you want to pick first? I'd go for Leicester Square just because I'm not really a music guy, but that's just me. 
On this particular evening, I wandered into Leicester Square, <coughs> where the more splendid, th where the more resplendent theatre of varieties could be found. A show at the Alhambra caught my eye, though one could never be quite sure of the act until it had been seen. I just gotta pick the balls. All right. Okay. The countless music halls of London were one way of passing the evening away. Farces of all styles played a conspicuous part in this week's bill. I guess you don't have to pick them both, but you're probably supposed to pick them hmm. both. I guess it's descriptive or something. It was a silly show. I did not stay long. They were all, all that trouble to draw the graphics for, like, just, <laughs> for just nothing for like one yeah. half a second. You know? Yeah, yeah they, they put a lot of effort into this. Yeah. They, always keep, they keep showing like multiple like, pictures every like, thing, you know. On the way home, I gave half a crown to a beggar before, because I saw him yawn. He was a fellow sufferer. Mm, quite sure he's suffering more than you, mate. <laughs> I made a vow. I would give the old country another day to fit me into something. If nothing happened, I would take the next boat for the Cape. Right to South Africa? Yes. That's a mistake, trust me. Uh, it's pretty interesting now, maybe. Alright. <coughs> I, I actually really like these historical settings because, like, you learn so much. Me too, yeah, and I love historical backdrops as well. Yeah. This is over a hundred years ago, it's crazy to think about it. Yeah. Hey, can I speak to you? May I come in for a minute? I recognize. I wonder if they show the people. They show like the, like these shadowy figures. It's yeah, interesting that's choice. Weird. I guess they would have to. I guess less to draw. <laughs> well, they, 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 they spend so much time on this artwork in general. You know, like anyway. Or right, go ahead. Yeah, they didn't have time for the people because they spend it all on the environments. <laughs> I recognized him as the occupant of a flat on the top floor, with whom I had passed the the time of day on the stairs. He was slim, with short, with a short brown beard and small, gimlety blue eyes. He was pawing at my arm. I motioned him in. I wonder why I would have motioned him in. I choose no, again. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, opening the door is a big ordeal for him. <laughs> No sooner was he over the threshold than he made a dash for my back room, where I used to smoke and write my letters. Then he bolted back. Is the door locked? Hmm. Looks like a TV at the top of the fireplace, but that's not what it is. No, it was probably a dresser. He filled himself a stiff whiskey and soda and drank it off in three gulps. I sat down in an armchair and lit my pipe. I was pretty certain that I had to deal with a madman. This is really cool. I, I mean, it's, it's not, not... I'm very sorry. It's a mighty liberty, but you look like the kind of man who would understand. I've had you in my mind all this week when things got troublesome. Say, will you do me a good turn? I'll listen to you. That's all I'll promise. Pardon. I'm a bit rattled tonight. You see, I happen at this moment to be dead. What does it feel like? <laughs> see, I guess they talk to you. See, that's, that's, that's why I said to you, you're the narrator, basically. I mean, you're, you're, you're his inner... You're, you're Hanny's inner monologue, essentially. And, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. 
No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I'm sorry. I, um, uh, so maybe that's why they draw them as ghosts, because there's dead people in this. No, A smile exactly. flickered over his <laughs> drawn face. I'm not mad. Yet. Say, sir, I've been watching you, and I reckon you're a cool customer. I reckon, too, you're an honest man and not afraid of playing a bold hand. I'm gonna confide in you. I need help worse than any man ever needed it. I want to know if I can count you in. Get on with your yarn and I'll tell you. presentation. <laughs> the queerest rigmarole. <laughs> Franklin P. Scudder was an American from Kentucky. After college, being pretty well off, he started out to see the world. Yeah, read fast because I'm not controlling this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. I, I can't, I'll read fast. He wrote a bit and acted as a war correspondent for a Chicago paper. Tension in the East Balkans. Oh, we saw this article in the paper. He had played about with politics at first for interest and then because he couldn't help himself. Then he made his discovery. Picasso and Monty Python. Yeah. Yeah. the Ministry of Silly Walks. It's not that. No, I really feel like it must be a reference. Away, away behind all the governments and the armies, there was a big subterranean movement going on, engineered by some very dangerous people. The sort of educated anarchists that make revolutions. And behind them were financiers who are who are playing for money. Jewish stereotyping tell. It kinda of looks like that. They wanted Russia and Germany at loggerheads. Ooh. Everything would be in the melting pot. The anarchists looked to see a new world emerge, where the capital, while the capitalists would make fortunes buying up wreckage. Yep. And Scudder himself had, had convinced himself that Jewish men were behind it all. Oh. Yeah, Jewish men. <laughs> Damn Jews on there. And Jews lurking on the ominously of June, in cabins. Constantine Karolides is coming to this city. The British Foreign Office has taken to having international tea parties. And the biggest of them is due on that date. Now, Carolides has reckoned the principal guest. And if my friends have their way, he will never return to his admiring countrymen. I sat up. For I'd been reading about Carolides that very afternoon. I just want to say, before we continue again, I really like this, this thing, whatever it is, game or not, but like... This presentation is wonderful. I really enjoy this, actually. It's very immersive. No, it. It's just so cool. It is. It... If you're watching it's this, really let, let me, let me leave, leave a comment and let me know what you think of this, or tell me in the chat now, because I just I just think it's super cool. Way better than the 25th War, that's for sure. All right, let's continue. <laughs> well, that's simple enough, anyhow. You can warn him and keep him at home. And play their game. If he does not come, they win, for he's the only man that can straighten out the tangle. And if his government are warned, he won't come, for he does not know how big the stakes will be on June the 15th. I was beginning to get interested in the beggar. And what about the British government? They're not going to let their guests be murdered. Tip them the wink, and they'll take extra precautions. No good. They might stuff your city with plainclothes detectives and double the police. And Constantine would still be a doomed man. 
He'll be murdered by an Austrian. And there'll be plenty of evidence to show the connivance of the big folk in Vienna and Berlin. It will all be an infernal lie, of course, but the case will look black enough to the world. But it's not going to come off if there's a certain man alive right here in London on the 15th day of June. And that man is going to be your servant, Franklin P. Scudder. How does a collected Scudder with that man? But hops are key, by the way, because I like it too. Very, very immersive. Yeah, I totally agree. I was getting to like the little chap. His jaw, his jaw shut like a rat trap, and there was the fire of battle in, in his gimlety eyes. Where did you find out this story? I completed my evidence ten days ago in Paris. I can't tell you the details now, for it's something of a history. But when I was quite sure in my own mind, I judged it my business to disappear. And I reached this city by a mighty queer circuit. Till yesterday, I thought I had muddied my trail some, and was feeling pretty happy. Then... The recollection seemed to upset him, and he gulped down some more whiskey. Then I saw a man standing in the street outside this block. I used to stay close in my room all day, and only slip out after dark for an hour or two. I watched him for a bit from my window, and I thought I recognized him. He came in and spoke to the porter. When I came back from my walk last night, I found a card in my letterbox. It bore the name of the man I want least to meet on God's earth. Who's that? Hmm. I think that the look in my companion I, I think that the look in my companion's eyes, the sheer naked scare on his face, completed my conviction of his honesty. The hops are key by the way said Titanic Adventure Out of Time vibes, though that was more of a game, the same immersion. I played that game, I never actually completed it, but I it was very I remember that game too, it was very cool. I gotta play that at some mm. point too. What did you do next? I realized I was bottled as sure as a pickled herring. <laughs> and that there was only one way out. I had to die. If my pursuers knew I was dead, they would go to sleep again. How did you manage it? I to I <laughs> I told the man who valets me that I was feeling pretty bad and got myself up to look like dead. Uh, and I guess he's American. That wasn't difficult, for I'm no slouch of disguises. Then I got a then I got a corpse. You can always get a body in London if you know where to go for it. I fetched it back in a trunk in the, on the top of a four wheeler and had to be assisted upstairs to my room. I had to pile up evidence for the inquest, so I went to bed and got my man to mix me a sleeping draft, and then I told him to clear out. He wanted to fetch me a doctor, but I swore some and said I couldn't abide leeches. <clears throat> when, I, when I was left alone, I started to fake up that corpse. He was my size, and I judged it, and I judged he had perished from too much alcohol. So I put some spirits about the place. The jaw was the weak point in the likeness, so I blew it away with a revolver. I dare say there will be somebody to swear having heard a shot, but there are no neighbors on my floor. And I guessed I could risk it. I left the body in I left the body in bed, dressed up in my pajamas, with a revolver lying on the bedclothes and a considerable mess about. Then I got then I got into a suit of clothes and had kept waiting for emergencies. I had kept waiting for emergencies. I didn't dare shake for fear of leaving tracks, and besides, it wasn't any kind of use to get into to try and get into the streets. Yeah, I'm sure he, I definitely will, will try to stream that one. Yeah, no, I think you should. That, that is a good game too. I've only played a bit of it, but it's very cool. Though it is a bit awkward to run. Well, they yeah, showed that's... some of the corpse. <laughs> that was like the corpse they just showed. For a second. I had had you in my mind all day. And there seemed nothing to do but to make an appeal to you. I watched from my window till I saw you come home, and then slipped down the stair to meet you. 
He sat blinking like an owl, fluttering with nerves and desperately determined. There, sir. I guess you know about as much as me of this business. What's this? What am I doing this More for? More symbol. So like, it's like, for my drink? Oh, I, I didn't know it was good enough. <laughs> what the hell is the point of this? Yeah, seriously, I'm pouring a drink. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't know why this is part of the game. I guess this is the interactivity. I know exactly. It's what it is. It's funny. Yeah. I was now pretty well convinced that he was going straight with me. It was the wildest sort of narrative, but I'd heard it <clears throat> but I'd heard in my time many steep tales which turned out to be true. And if he had wanted to get a location in my flat and then cut my throat, he would have pitched a milder yarn. <laughs> Hand me your key, and I'll take a look at the corpse. Excuse my caution, but I'm bound to verify a bit if I can. I reckon you'd ask for that. But I haven't got it. It's on my chain on the dressing table. I had to leave it behind, for I couldn't leave any clues to breed suspicions. The gentry who are after me are pretty bright-eyed citizens. You'll have to take me on trust for the night, and tomorrow you'll get the proof of the corpse business right enough. I thought for an instant or two. Right. I'll trust you for the night. I'll lock you into this room and keep the key. Just one word, Mr. Scudder. I believe you're straight. But if so be you are not, I should warn you that I'm a handy man. With a gun. What a homophobe. I haven't the privilege of your <laughs> name, sir. But let me tell you that you're a true gentleman. <laughs> now, I'll thank I'm you to lend me a razor. I'm a homosexual in my house. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Obviously, that's not what I meant. But yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's funny. <laughs> well, look, uh, so we look at this now. I mean, maybe, maybe I was on the right track after all. Um... <laughs> So we just agreed to help a uh, anti-Semitic anti guy. Apparently. Although, it turns out later on, I think he's not really anti-Semitic. No. I, in... <laughs> I took him into my bedroom and turned him loose. Oh, my. That's what I'm saying. Oh, exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I took him into my bedroom and turned him loose. In half an hour's time, a figure came out that I scarcely recognized. Oh, what did you do to him? <laughs> my hat. Mr. Scudder. You man. Only his gimlety, hungry eyes were the same. He was the very model, even to the brown complexion, of some British officer who had spent a long spell in India, who had had a long spell in India. He was shaved clean, his hair was parted in the middle, and he had cut his eyebrows. Huh. Not Mr. Scudder. Captain Theopolis Digby of the 40th Gurkhas. Presently home on leave. I'll thank you to remember that, sir. I made him up a bed in the smoking room and sought my own couch, more cheerful than I had been for the past month. Things did not. Things did happen occasionally, even in this god-forgotten metropolis. A pretty linear story, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> it winds around like a snake until it's the end. How many things are there? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, a little more. You're good for a little bit more, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good for more. I'm good for more of you up. Next time we do this, I'll plug in my other mic before I boot up the computer, then hopefully it'll work.
Uh, they really build up the atmosphere here. It's very well done. Yeah. The graphics are excellent. Mm, no, I love I love the art. You know, things like that lighting effect is really good. Just yeah, no, that, that's very well. Oh yeah, baby. Come on, let's go. Stop that row, Paddock. There's a friend of mine, Captain... Captain... Uh, he's dossing down in there. Get breakfast for two, and then come and speak to me. He has about as much gift of the gab as a, hip, as a hippopotamus, and was not a, was not a great hand at valeting. But I knew I could count on his loyalty. Talk about Paddock. Paddock was a fellow I had done a good turn to out in the, on the Sebaqui, and I <clears throat> and I had inspanned him as my servant as soon as I got to England. I told Paddock a fine story about how my friend about how my friend was a great swell, with his nerves pretty bad from overwork, who wanted absolute rest and stillness. Hey Pirate Gear Boy, Pirate Gear Boy asks, so is this a game where you take thirty nine steps? I uh, no, you take more than thirty nine steps in this game. The, the, the reason why it's called the thirty nine steps you don't find out until much later in the in the story. Yes. Nobody had got to know. Nobody had got to know he was here, or he would be besieged by communications from the India office and the Prime Minister, and his cure would be ruined. And I am bound to say, Scudder played up splendidly when he came to breakfast. He fixed Paddock with his eyeglass, just like a British officer. Asked him about the Boer War, and slung up, and slung out at me a lot of stuff about my imaginary powers. Paddock couldn't learn to call me sir, but he served Scudder's as if his life depended on it. <laughs> I left him with the newspaper and a box of cigars and headed out to Alexandra Park Racecourse. Oh, gambling addict. Maybe. When I got back, when I got back, the lift man had an important face. There's a lift while you hit the stairs before. Nasty business here this morning, sir. Gent in number 15, been and shot himself. They've just took him to the mortuary. The police are up there now. Mm. Corroborates the story a little bit. I guess I'm going up to the top. I ascended to number 15 and found a couple of bobbies and an inspector busy making an examination. <laughs> I asked a few idiotic questions, and they soon kicked me out. <laughs> well, he probably just wants them to know that he's a it. Yeah, it's just confirming that there is indeed a corpse in there. Right. I attended the inquest the next day. <clears throat> the jury found it a case of suicide while of unsound mind. I gave Scudder a full account of the affair, and it interested him greatly. He said he wished to, <clears throat> he wished he could have attended, for he reckoned it would be about a spicy, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm getting all cogged for some reason. He said he wished he could have attended, for he reckoned it would be about as spicy as to read one's own obituary notice. Did you take a, did you take a drink a cup of tea or something? Uh, <clears throat> no, I, I just had a glass of water and oh, okay. I think I may have drunk it too fast. It happens to me sometimes. Yeah. Scudder was very peaceful after the first two days he stayed with me. He read and smoked a bit and made a heap of jottings in a notebook, and every night we had a game of chess at which he beat me hollow. But on the third day I could see he was beginning to get restless. He fixed up a list of days and started making remarks against them. What does that mean, like, Monday, I hate you. Uh, I guess that was yeah. good. <laughs> well, everyone hates Mondays. 
He started listening for little noises and was always asking me if Paddock could be trusted. Once or twice he got peevish and apologised for it. I didn't blame him. I made every allowance, for he had taken on a fairly stiff job. Please. And then one night he was very solemn. Say, Hanny. What is it? I judge I should let you a bit deeper into this business. I should hate to go out without leaving somebody else to put up a fight. Oh, that's ominous. See, hang on one second. I'm going to get more sodas too, because I'll be right back. Alright, hang on one second. Okay. gone I'll try and see if I can get this mic working probably not but Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Wait, I got the wrong headphone in, I think. Can you hear me now? All right, yes, I can. It's always the same since I've been having internet issues, so I'll have to go back and watch after. This appears to be pretty good from what I've seen. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, no, by the way, I bought this game on DVD a while back, but it's on Steam for 99 cents. Mm, that's a good deal. Yeah, pretty good deal. All right. So is it proving close to the book so far? Because you said you read the book. I think it's like <laughs> word for word the book, essentially. Like, like. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really close to the book. Oh, that's a pretty, so, uh, so based pretty... on the book, it's going to start to get like pretty interesting really soon. This is just all the preamble to the excitement. Ooh. Okay. He began to tell me in detail what I only heard from him vaguely. I did not give him very close attention. The fact is, I was more interested in his own adventures than in his high politics. Ooh. He talked about a black stone and a man that lisped in his speech. And he described very particularly someone that he had never referred to without a shudder, an old man who could hood his eyes like a hawk. I reckon that Carol Dees, that Carol Dees and his affairs were not my business. So a lot that Scudder said slipped clean out of my memory. It was very clear that the danger to Carol Dees would not begin till he had got to London, and would come from the very highest quarters, where there would be no thought of suspicion. Oh, I am going to say this word, this name's so wrong. He mentioned the name of a woman, Julia Ch Chechny. Chechny? Chechny. Julia Chechny, as having something to do with the danger. She would be the she would be the decoy, I gathered, to get Carol Dees out of the care of the guards. I think it's Carol Carolides, by the way. Carolides. Carol Carolides. Carolides. Yeah, maybe Carolides. I thought Carol could be Carolides. I thought Carolides, but it could be either one. He remained solemn for the rest of the evening and spoke a good deal about death. I reckon it's like going to sleep when you're pretty well tired out. Awaking a fine summer day with the scent of hay coming in at the window. I used to thank God for such mornings way back in the bluegrass country. Tucky. And I guess I'll thank him when I wake up on the other side of Jordan. That's grim. Oh, 
all those spots? Like spots on the camera? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, like sunspots or like lens flares? Yeah. The next day he was much more cheerful and read the life of Stonewall Jackson much of the time while the rest of London celebrated Empire Day. I went out to dinner with a mining engineer whom I had seen, who, who I had to see on business and came back in time for our game of, game of chess before turning in. I think it's raining. <laughs> there you go. Same right here. Oh, get ready to draw patterns. <laughs> what the hell? It was like we timed at some point. Oh dear. Skada. <laughs> like this is in the soup. <laughs> oh yeah. I think we're in the soup now. Hmm. He's definitely dead. Yes. Very <laughs> dead. Freaking sword. Yeah, damn. It's got a really twisty handle. Yeah. It's not practical at all. They feel like the uh, people who made this game are not good at faces, but they did good, face, good faces in the newspaper, so that's weird. Uh, I feel like those were like traced from or yeah, something. Maybe those deep. are like real people. Those are like real people. The poor staring white face was more than I could bear. I don't see you staring white face. <laughs> Oh, there's a white, there's a white sheet. Maybe that's what I need. I staggered to a cupboard, found the brandy, and swallowed several mouthfuls. I had seen men die violently before. Indeed, I had killed a few myself in the Matabele War. But this cold-blooded indoor business was different. I needed to think. I am an ordinary sort of fellow, not braver than other people, but I hate to see a good man downed, and that long knife would not be the end of Scudder if I could play the game in his place. His enemies had found him, and, he, and had taken the best way to make certain of his silence. Scudder had been in my rooms for four days, and his enemies must have reckoned that he had confided in me. I would be next to go. It might be that very night, or the next day, or the day after, but my number was up, all right. Few people knew me in England. I had no real pal who could come forward and swear to my character. Perhaps that was what those secret enemies were playing for. They were clever enough for anything, and an English prison was a good way of getting rid of me till after July, till after June 15th, as a knife in my chest. If I, knew, if I told the whole story, and by any miracle was believed, I would be playing their game. Carolides would stay at home, which was what they wanted. Supposing I went out now and called the police, or went, or went to bed and let Paddock find the body and call them in the morning, what kind of story was I to tell about Scudder? The odds were a thousand to one that I would be charged with murder, and the circumstantial evidence was strong enough to hang me. Sucks. I mean, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not sure. I mean, like, you could have just said, yeah, he was staying in my house, like, yeah. I got got back from dead. Right. Like, it's not like they can take fingerprints back then. Right. Someone must have been searching for something, perhaps for the pocketbook. Pocket search. Oh. The lighting effects are nice. Pocket knife. Ooh. Oh, cool. Old money. Old money. They did some, some, research, some research here. So, wait a second. 1911? Is that what it says? Yeah, 1911. It said 1917 yeah. for a second. There was nothing in the waistcoat pocket. Until 
life. So Ooh. well, Jackson. Blood all over it. It's funny, the, the, the painting's on is like, uh, Jackson is dead. Oh, no. So Stonewall Jackson dead. It's sort of funny, actually. Well, that's, uh, that's a good bit of irony. Good yeah. dramatic irony. <laughs> Same article we read already. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Oh, lighty. Not exactly the same, but it's close enough. Stability in the Balkans. We have a skill stability in the Balkans. Ooh. American agent suicide by gunshot. Oh, I guess this is about his the body that was found in his flat. Oh, maybe. No. Okay. Oh, oh wait, yeah, no, you're right, you're right, right. That's him, that's him. Christopher Rick. That was the alias, I yeah. guess. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's an article about his about the hip, the guy that he killed. Yeah, his valley makes it a sleeping draft. That's funny. A large shark was found after the four apartment. Whoever the lift man of the Woodpole Red Street residence said it had a considerable weight when he helped the deceased take it to his room. So they think it's alcohol. Probably, if you like, if you like the murderer read this, you probably be able to figure out pretty easily that it wasn't really him. You know? Yeah. So uh, that's weird. how they put it together. Yeah, the article wasn't very helpful, I'm sure. <laughs> this is cool. This this is really giving the sense of a conspiracy. The knife had pins scudder to the floor. That's dope. Show text uh, for you. <laughs> yeah. Dear Peter, was it Samuel Johnson who wrote, "When you are tired of London, you are tired of life." Well, my dear Peter, if that, if so, then I am tired of life. For here I am in London, bored and at my wit's end. The city is noisy and chaotic, and I can't get any exercise. I'm yet to meet a suitable lady to pass my time with, though I have met a fair few unsuitable ones. This is, I think, this is you writing. This is Hattie writing this. I think. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Sounds like him. Whining and being bored. My bets are my bets are paying off on the track, however, and my shares in the Rhodesian diamond mine continue to keep me dining dining in the capital's best restaurants, despite Paddock's continual insistence that I should dine at dine at home and try his culinary skills. One can only hope that they are better than his valet skills. Speak soon, dear friend, Richard Hamay. No trace of Scudder's black book. Most likely the enemy had found it, but they had not found it on Scudder's body. I had come to a decision. I must vanish somehow, and keep vanished till the end of the second week of June. Then I must find a way to get in touch with the government people, and tell them what Scudder had told me. I wish to heaven he had told me more, and that I'd listened more carefully to what he had told me. There was a big risk that, even if I weathered the other dangers, I would not be believed in the end. I must take my chance of that, and hope that something might happen which would, which would confirm my tale in the eyes of the government. Yeah, this is great, this is building the atmosphere so well. Yeah.
My notion was to get off some wild district where my where my felt craft would be of some use to me, for I would like to be for I would be like a trapped rat in a city. In a city. I considered that Scotland would be best, for my people were Scotch and I could pass anywhere as an ordinary Scotsman. I fixed on Galloway as the best place to go. It was the nearest wild part of Scotland, and from the look of the map was not over thick with population. Recreate something not detailed. How was I to make my way to see Pancras and Pancras train station? I was pretty certain that Scudder's friend would be watching from the outside. This puzzled me for a bit. Then I had an inspiration on which I went to bed and slept for two troubled hours. Yeah, yeah, that's it's good. good. That's, good. That's, good. that's good music, but like, just tore it down a little bit. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is building the atmosphere, though. It is. Attention to. Waking up, I had a great revulsion of feeling and felt a god forgotten fool. My inclination was to let things slide and trust the British police taking a reasonable view of my case. But as I reviewed the situation, I could find no arguments to bring against my decision of the previous night. So with a wry mouth, I resolved to go on with my plan. <coughs> I, hung I hung out a well-used tweed suit, a pair of strong nailed boots, and a flannel shirt with a collar. Into my pockets I stuffed a spare shirt, a cloth cap, some handkerchiefs, and a toothbrush. So big pockets. So for sure. Yeah, I know. These are... They, they like deep pockets. I took fifty pounds of it in sovereign. I took fifty pounds of it in sovereigns in a belt, which I had brought back from Rhodesia. The butter sinks, both bloody. Oh, damn! The meadows just wash their hands in there. Because they don't have DNA collection then. <laughs> Oh, it's my control here. I didn't realize I have control. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, you got Are you shaved. kidding me? I got to trim his freaking mustache? Yes, you know. Gotta uh, disguise yourself. Oh my god, I can't believe this. Oh, You're rinsing your hairs down the drain, that's gonna clog it. <laughs> Now came the next step. Haddock used to arrive punctually at 7.30 and let himself in with a latch key. But about 20 minutes to 7, as I knew from bitter experience, the milkman turned, out, turned up with a great clatter of cans and deposited my share outside my door. Ah, uh, milkman. Or on him, I staked all my chances. I used to have a book, man, back in the day. Yeah. Those were before my time. I went into the darkened smoking room, where I breakfasted, breakfasted off a whiskey and soda and some biscuits. By this time it was getting on for six o'clock. I put a pipe in my pocket and filled my pouch from the tobacco jar on the table by the fireplace. That's lovely, like little details like that. Ooh, what we got? It's his book. Oh, he's found his black book. It seemed a good omen. I'm 
I click on Skyrim again. Goodbye, old chap. I'm gonna do my best for you. Wish me well. I'm actually you smelling rather nasty by now. <laughs> <laughs> I hang about in the hall waiting for the milkman. I was fairly choking to get out of doors. The fool had chosen this day of all to come late. <laughs> that class is in here. should start now. Yes, man, this is a hell of a, <laughs> hell of a moment. Mm, the tension is ratcheting up. The atmosphere of these things is just excellent. I gotta figure out who made this game. I mean, it's really impressive. Yeah, no, no, should look into it. it. Seems to use the same engine as that other. Label. The voice act is really good. Yeah. He was a young man about my own height with an ill-nourished moustache and wearing a flat blue cap and white ovals. That's why he trimmed his moustache before. Ah. Uh, he's like going to kill him in a few minutes. I'm like a sportsman, and I want you to do me a service. Lend me your cap and overall for ten minutes, and here's a sovereign for you. He sounds a lot like John Cleese, by the way. Hmm, I can hear it. Yeah. But John Cleese is just kind of the standard uh, posh received pronunciation voice. Yeah, it does. His eyes opened at the sight of the gold and he grinned, grinned broadly. What's the guy? A bet. I have time to explain, but to win it, I've got to be a milkman for the next ten minutes, and all you've got to do is to stay here till I come back. You'll be a bit late, but nobody will complain, and you'll have that quid for yourself. All right. I ain't the man to spoil a bit of sport. Here's the rig, Gaffer. Wearing his hat and overalls, I went whistling downstairs. That stuff's gonna come out of his paycheck. <laughs> At first, I thought there was nobody in the street. Then I caught sight of a policeman a hundred yards down and a lo loafer shuffling past the other side. Ooh -ooh. I crossed the street in character, whistling gaily and imitating the jaunty swing of the milkman. Some impulse made me raise my eyes to the house opposite, and there at a first floor window was a face. As the loafer passed, he looked up, and I fancied a signal was exchanged. Uh -oh. Then I took the first side street. There was no one in the alleyway, so I dropped the milk cans inside the hall and set the cap and overall after them. I had only just put, my, put on my cloth cap when a postman came round the corner. I gave him good morning. He answered me unsuspiciously. Then I took to my heels and ran. Yeah, yeah. This is like chase music. I'm sure we can try to catch a 710 train, which is pretty far away. Yeah, so, hell, of a, hell, of hell of a way to run. <laughs> Oh wow. That's been cool. 
I had no time to take a ticket. A porter told me the platform. I saw the train had. I saw the train already in motion. Two station officials blocked the way. I dodged them and clambered into the last carriage. I had made it. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of achievements in this. This is good. This is like feels like a real tense story. Three minutes later, an irate guard interviewed me. He wrote out he <clears throat> he wrote out for me a ticket to Newton Newton Stewart, a name which had suddenly come back to my memory. Then he conducted me from the first class compartments to a third class smoker. the difference in the compartments. <laughs> yep, the occupant was occupied by a sailor and a stout woman with a child. Looks like it smells lovely. Look at the smoke of the air. Yeah, God, it looks gross. <laughs> oh, more ads. Obesity can be reduced without drugs or starvation. That's the same thing. You know, hats and gowns for ascot. Obesity, obesity <laughs> can reduce. Yeah. How? <laughs> Take Calvin's uh, Kalari biscuits. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, even <laughs> back then, people were selling phony <laughs> solutions. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's messed yeah. up. I mean. Even back then. Oh, uh, is anything interesting here? The Pope's job. Hmm. Let's do yeah. What else was the look at here? Ah, uh, it's a sail job catching trains. <laughs> Aye, ah, the impudence of that geared. He needed a Scotch tongue to put him in his place. He was complaining in this way and no hain a ticket and her no fever till August 12 month. And he was objecting to this gentleman spitting. Weird. Oh. How dare he? <laughs> so then he speaks Scottish. With a Scottish accent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, he's English it, yeah. with a Scottish accent. <laughs> well, it's mentioned that... Yeah, there is a Scottish language, but <laughs> not speaking it. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I had a solemn time travelling north that day. There's Leicester. I asked myself why, when I was still a free man, had I stayed on in London and not got not got the good of, the good out of this heavenly country. Then I got Scudder's little book, little pocketbook and studied it. Well, oh, I'll uh, go through the ordeal of opening the book. All these Roman numerals. Oops. I'm sure they're paid. All these Roman numerals here. Yeah. I don't know what these mean. I tried for hours, but none of the words answered. It's a kind of yeah, cipher. Yeah, yeah, the code of some kind. I was certain that Scudder did never did anything without a reason, and I was pretty sure that there was a cipher in all of this. I have, I have a head for things like chess and puzzles, and I used to reckon myself pretty good at finding out ciphers. These sets of figures look like they corresponded to the letters of the alphabet. Palpuk says a quick time of them and not the quick, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I wonder if it it's not in time. Really cool more than a This is good to scout. 
Right. What does MDR stand for? Uh, look that up. Order. I, w I woke up at Dumfries just in time to, to bundle out onto the crowded platform. There was a young man on the platform whose look I didn't like, but he never glanced at me. I caught sight of the mirror of, a, of the mirror of an automation machine, but my brown face, my old tweeds, and my slouch. I was the very model of one of the hill farmers who were now crowding into the third-class carriages. I boarded the Galloway train, travelling with half a dozen men, uh, half a dozen in an atmosphere of shag and clay pipes. Oh my train, They had come from the weekly market, and their mouths were full of prices. I said to the chill, I said, "By the way, like there's options for this game. Like there, there's like four options for, for the language. You could do this is the standard. Then you could do." Um, when they speak in Scottish dialect, you can have to translate that to English or something. I think, which I think I did, but, I, but it didn't seem to show up. As, I'm not sure anyway. And then uh, we did that. And then there was there was one more option. The fourth option was actually like, it looked like it was Gaelic. It wasn't oh. freaking English at all. Maybe it was like Old Scottish or Gaelic or something like that. So I don't oh, know. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but I wasn't going to pick that one because I don't understand <laughs> yeah, that language. <laughs> I do not either. Mm -hmm. um, above, <clears throat> above half the men had launched, lunched heavily and were highly flavoured with whiskey, but they took no notice of me. You missed the luck, Gamer's Grotto. <laughs> I heard accounts of how the lambing had gone, to, had gone up in the can, and the Deutsch had a, <clears throat> and the Deutsch and a dozen, dozen other mysterious waters. It is your name. Oh, the lamb. Uh, oh, oh, that is. <laughs> the can and the Deutsch. <laughs> About five o'clock, the carriages had emptied, and I was left alone as I had hoped. I got out at the next station. It reminded me of one of those forgotten little stations in the Karoo. An old station master with his spade over his shoulder sauntered the train, took charge of a parcel and went back to his potatoes, while a child of ten received my ticket. Child labour. It's pretty frequently run down here. Oh yeah, not a... Not the most inhabited place. Look at this. So he's just trying to get away from civilization. Yeah. Onwards. Onward. <laughs> Onward. I like how they drew all these these screens, though. No, they did. Yeah, they did. They've done a great job. I was getting very hungry when I eventually came to a herd's cottage. A brown-faced woman greeted me with the kindly shyness of moorland places. When I asked for a night's lodging, she said she was, I, was very well, I was welcome to the bed in the loft, and very soon she set before me a hearty meal of ham and eggs, scones, and thick sweet milk. That sounds nice. Very hospitable. Yeah, no, really. You're letting a random stranger crash with you and feeding yeah. them. <laughs> At the, darkening, <clears throat> at the darkening, her man came from the hills, a lean giant, who in one step covered as much ground as three paces of ordinary mortals. <laughs> they asked me no questions, for they had the perfect breeding of all dwellers in the wilds, but I could see they set me down as a kind of dealer. I think that meant something else back then. Yeah, joking, I, I, I took some troubles to confirm their view. Some kind of traitor, I think he means. Yeah, the traveling merchants sort of thing, and then still. They refused any payment, and by six the next morning I had breakfasted, breakfasted and was striding southwards again. Yeah. 
All the slackness of the past months was slipping from my bones, and I stepped out like a four-year-old. My notion was to return to the railway line. It <clears throat> was to return to the railway line, a station or two further further on than the place where I had alighted yesterday, and to double back. Sound of the walker. Yeah, no, this is very immersive. I waited till I saw the smoke of an east-going train on the horizon. There it comes. Look at that. Ooh. Damn, this has got animation. Let's get to decide when you want to approach. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> then I approached to the approached the booking office and took a ticket for Dumfries. Dumfries. Don't freeze. Don't freeze. Oh, wait a second. I got two. What happened? Oh, okay. I thought I got a. I, th yeah. I thought I got a third. Uh, I got a, uh, I got a, uh, no, we're continuing a pace. Let's do one more. <laughs> Might be the last one for today. We'll see. I want, hopefully, I want it to end on a cliffhanger. <laughs> we'll see. It probably won't, though. Still sort of like quietish, but he escaped. He thinks he escaped. Mm. Palpox is get haggis. I guess. Mm, I guess. Mm, boiled sheep. <laughs> the occupants of the carriage were an old shepherd and his dog, a wall-eyed brute I mistrusted. <clears throat> the man was asleep, and on the cushions beside him was that morning Scotsman. Solves the summer underwear problem. <laughs> oh, I can't quite read the specialty fabric. It's ready to think that's actually wrong with us. Royal Sailor White. And it seems to mostly be ads. Good God! What's that? Oh! Oh, I think we've found something of interest. Oh! Empire murder, Empire Day murder shocks London. Police questioning suspect. Scotland Yard's top officers have been called into called into action following the brutal slaying of a decorated British officer in an affluent apartment block in London, near Portland Place. The killing took place last week, last week's Empire Day celebrations. The as yet unnamed man was discovered in the first floor flat on Sunday morning by its valet, a Mr. Paddock. Intriguingly, the victim was not in charge of the apartment, and the owner was not to be found. Even more intriguing is the arrest of a uh, is the arrest a, a local milkman found uh, found whistling in the hallway uh, of the apartment, a mere five minutes away from the Ox from Oxford Street. Mr. Paddock sprang the alarm and had the young man arrested. Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. M Mr. McGill McGilvery said his top officers were currently in interviewing the suspect. This is one of the most horrendous murders we have had in this part of London for some time. The fact is that it happened on Empire Day. Uh, the fact that it happened on Empire Day just makes the whole affair even the whole affair whole affair event oh, no, they, they misspelled that. The whole affair even more abhorrent. We will make sure to bring that no stone is left unturned in bringing the killer to justice. Mr. Paddock can inform the police that the dead man's name was Sir Captain Digby, uh, the Sir Captain Digby of the 40th Gurkhas, and he had been at the apartment for four days. As yet, Scotland Yard had been unable to confirm his identity. The details of the murder are also sparse. This is the second dead body to have been found in, the, in that very apartment block in the past week. Just six days earlier, an American businessman, identified as Mr. Scott Camelan, was found in his apartment, having committed suicide. Neighbor Mr. Twiston said, we've, we've never seen anything like this. This is a respectable part of the city, safe behind closed doors, at least uh, until now. I'm all shook up 
I've cancelled my milk order. <laughs> McGilvery assured. Oh, oh no, it's milk. Oh no, no milk. No, no milk. McGilvery ah. uh, assured residents that there is nothing more. There is nothing to be concerned about, and that there is no apparent connection between the deaths, and that the last killing is most likely the result of a financial dispute. Okay. Alright, so in brief, uh, they found um, the American guy's body and they arrested the milkman, which is kind of our fault. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully he gets out really quickly. Yeah. What's this here? Ooh, it's no. It just looks like it's contextualizing things. Portland Place is on the run. Ooh. Oops, oh, yeah, it's, it's zooming in is difficult, yeah. New twists and turns in the case of the Portland Place murder, as Scotland Yard releases its prime suspect and reveals that the true criminal had escaped the capital. But Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. McGilvery was unwilling to elaborate on further details as to whom the murderer might be. We have reason to believe that the killer has left London by one of the northern lines. We no longer have reason to suspect the milkman is our murderer, or has any connection with the killing of Captain Theophilus Digby, found dead earlier this week. Captain Digby is, the, is reported to have been on home leave and staying with a friend in an apartment near London's affluent Portland Place apartments. Chief Investigating Officer, Mr. Scaife, told the Times, there was a brutal slaying of an honourable man. This was a brutal slaying of an honourable man. We urge anyone who may have seen or heard any on the night of the 23rd of May to come forward and make yourself known. The owner of the apartment is in the owner of the apartment in question, Mr. Richard Henney, is still missing. Ah, so they let they released the milk, but that's good anyway. Look, <laughs> man was executed today. That's Oh. Okay, so we can select his cane. Oh. In the, in the corner there. Yeah. I could almost, I could smell the alcohol in his breath. We were approaching the station at which I had got out yesterday. The potato digging station master had, gingered, had been gingered into some activity, for the west going train was waiting to pass. From it descended three men who were asking him questions. Uh -oh. Sitting well back in the shadow, I watched them carefully. Getting a little tired, so that's the last chapter for today. Okay. All the party looked out across the moor where the white road departed. I hoped they were going to take up my tracks there. I suppose they were the local police who had been stirred up by Scotland Yard and had traced me as far as this one horse side, one horse siding. One of them had a book and took down notes. The old potato biggers, digger seemed to have turned peevish. The child who had collected my ticket was talking volubly. Oh no, he's ratting us out. <laughs> Probably. As we moved away from the station, the old shepherd began to stir. On a train traveling east towards Dumfries in Scotland. Oh, oh that's what comes of being a teetotaler. 
suppose. I express. <laughs> I don't know, because he's clearly drunk, so he's not a teeter. Yeah. <laughs> I expressed my surprise that in him, that in him, I should have met a blue ribbon stalwart. Oh, I am a strong teetotaler. I, I took the pledge last Martin Miss and I haven't touched a drop of whiskey since then. Not even a hug my knee. Though I was so tempted. Oh, 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 that's what I get. I heat better than hellfire and twine looking different ways for the Sabbath. What did it? Yeah. I drink the car, brandy. Now, being a teetotal, I keep it half the whiskey, but I was all I was nip nip no dear this brandy and I doubt I'll no be wheel for a fun night. <laughs> uh, teetotal from just one drink. My plan had been to get out to some station down the line, but the train suddenly gave me a better chance. I looked out at, uh, and saw that every carriage window was closed and no human figure appeared in the landscape. George, oh, leave, us leave us alone, doggo. So I quickly dropped from the carriage. It would have been all right but for that infernal dog. I could not have made a more public departure if I'd left with a burglar and a brass band. Bugler and a brass band. Bugler, my bad, sorry. Bugler and a brass band. A bugler is a lot louder. Happily, the drunken shepherd provided a, a diversion. He and his dog, which was attached by a rope to his waist, suddenly cascaded out of the carriage. They had forgotten me. Good diversion. Yes. They're making an old drunk shepherd get hurt. <laughs> I looked back, but there was nothing in the landscape. For the first time, I felt the terror of the hunted on me. It was not the police that I thought of, but the other folk. Who knew, who knew that I knew Scudder's secret and dared not let me live. Scudder's secret? You said that? His secret. Sorry? I did? Sorry? I, I said, I don't know, I was just going to say his secret, but I'm, I'm like falling asleep, so... Oh yeah, uh, no, I, I, did, I did read that, sorry. Oh, I believe you, I just <laughs> probably just, okay. just like met a micro nap while you said it. I think, huh. on that note, I think I need to stop here because um, I'm going to... What's extras, by the way? Cards also. Mm -hmm. I don't know what some of these things are. Oh, that's cool. Cards oh, all right, cool. the story. It's like trading cards. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. A paddock. <laughs> oh. Paddock is great. Right. Okay. 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 This is cool. Peter and Gar, what are to you? The knife. Oh, those are extras. There's no trouble about reading the options. Hmm. Original text, no dialect. Original text, no subtitles. Gaelic. Oh yeah, that's Gaelic. That's pretty cool. Atarich. Atarich. But I cannot read that. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. 
digital adaptations. Hmm. Well, the story mechanics is the is the name of the company. The new. I feel like this is the only thing in the world. It didn't spot and sell that well. Yeah, that's a pity. I guess old uh, adaptations of old novels don't uh, sell that well. But it's a pity because it's very creative. Ah, yes. Anyway, yeah, this is this is an interesting game. Um, it's like right now, it's like he seems like he's okay, but like a lot of the the, the stories, he's being chased by these bad guys, and there's like one narrow escape after another. So I'm sure it'll be much more. It'll continue to be atmospheric as we go forward. So I mean, mm. not too much interactivity, but like it's. Very, very immersive. I love the, the, the graphics, or the art, as you're calling it, Dorian. I love the, the, the sound. And I actually like this, too, because you can sort of see, like, how much longer you got, and it doesn't feel like it's going to go on forever. Like, like they said, there's a sense yeah. of progression, so I like that, too. What do you think? No, I, I'm really, I'm really drawn to it. It really feels like it's, um... Like, you know, visual novels are common, but, like, using them to adapt existing stories is very creative it's like um a way of giving the story new life without drastically changing it in any, any way yeah like making it making it easy to absorb without compromising any of the story or the way the story is told I agree I uh, they're adding a ton to it with all this and basically you think about it, the, the book the original book is just text they're adding a ton to it by adding this the artwork and the music I think yeah. this is really cool. And, I mean, and the voice acting too. So, I definitely am enjoying this. I definitely keep playing it. Um, you know, probably quite after the next few days, maybe, maybe like on Thursday or something, if you're feeling But uh, yeah, I totally. Mean. Yeah, if you're watching this after the fact, let me know what you think. You know, just leave a comment and feel free to subscribe, obviously, and like the thing. But thanks to Thanks to Dorian for doing the voice acting today. It's really been awesome. And thanks to all the people who have been watching live, uh, including Always Asleep, Pirate Gear Boy, Pow Puck, Endy, Gamers Grotto, Hops or Key, Luis. Um, I probably would scroll up to see who girls I'm not thinking about. But uh, uh, Luke, probably most people. Luis was here and Endy on. Um, and Luis was here. Um, I said Luis. Endy. All right, sorry. Uh, end me on, end me on. Yeah, I got, I, I, I got, I think I got ND. I meant to say, I'm pretty sure I did. Anybody else? Yeah, I think you got, ev I think you got everybody actually. Uh, hopefully I got everybody. All right, if I missed you, I apologize, but uh, make sure you're here for the next one. We'll do another stream pretty soon. I hope you like this and let me know what you think. And have a real great uh, night, everybody. Thanks a lot and uh, peace out. All right, thanks.